four, three, two, one, and lift off. April 11th, 1970, launch day. The crew of Apollo 13. Jim Lovell, commander and veteran of three previous missions. He had orbited the moon Christmas 1968 on Apollo 8. Fred Hayes, his first time up, lunar module pilot. Jack Swigert, command module pilot. Three days ago, he was on the backup crew. Now he replaced Ken Mattingly. Mattingly had been dropped from the mission because he had been exposed to German measles. He would watch the launch from Houston's mission control. Ignition flight. Roger. Roger. Clock start, flight. Roger. Press the solo engines. Roger. Okay, Fado has it look. Looks good here, flight. Good agreement. Okay, where's the Eddie look? That's once he looks good, flight. Okay, Capcom, we go on the ground. Okay, we're going one, Capcom. Can't really do flight. Booster, how do you look? We look good, flight, we'll go. Okay, fight up. We're go, flight, looks good here. Guys, that's a good flight. Okay, Econ, GNC. Looks good, flight, looks good, flight. Flight, fighter trajectory confirmed staging. Roger. Booster, you don't see any problem with that, though, do you? Uh, negative, not right now, flight. All the other engines are go. The next step in the routine of lunar flight was to burn out of Earth orbit toward the moon then pull free of the third stage and dock with the lunar module, Aquarius. At the controls of the command module, Odyssey, Jack Swigert. We're hard docked, Houston. Roger, understand hard dock, good deal. They pull Aquarius away from the Saturn third stage, the S-4B. Okay, I can, uh, I can see the S-4B now at the hatch window. Odyssey and Aquarius moved away from Earth toward the moon. Okay, yes, sir, we've had a problem here. Fine, guidance. Go, guidance. We've had a hardware restart. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. How about you, Ecom? You see anything that, uh, with the instrumentation you got that could be venting? That's a firm flight. Let me look at the system flight as far as the venting is concerned. Okay, let's start scanning. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. At the moment, the astronauts are continuing to try to isolate their trouble. A late report says the spacecraft now is operating on battery power alone. All unnecessary equipment is being turned off. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. We got the uh, limb still attached. The limb spacecraft's good, so if we need uh, to get back home, we got a limb to do a good portion of it with. Okay, we want to keep the O2 and that kind of stuff working. We'd like to have RCS, but we got the command module system, so we're in good shape if we need to get home. Let's solve the problem, but let's not make it any worse by guessing. My concern was increasing all the time. It went from I wonder what this is going to do to the landing, so I wonder if we can get back home again. Flight Econ. Go ahead, Econ. The pressure in O2 tank 1 is all the way down to 297. We better think about getting in the LEM or using the LEM systems. I'd say this is a serious uh, situation that we have ever had in manned space flight. We've always called the LEM a good lifeboat under those circumstances. If at any time in the mission, however, the limb had separated and we had gotten ourselves into a rendezvous situation or uh, the, the command module being around the moon, then what you state is absolutely true. It would, it would be a fatal situation. Go ahead, Light. I want you to get some guys figuring out minimum power in the limb to sustain life. The accident had occurred 200,000 miles from Earth. Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes rode in the lunar module attached to a lifeless command module. Apollo 13 had started as a mission of scientific exploration. It was now a matter of survival. <laughs> 